Hello everybody, uh, so this right here is a rat. I've cut it open uh, and welcome to the rat dice section. So I'm going to go through and look at, we're going to look at some of the visuals of the cut open specimen and identify some of the major structures you have to know for your week one ob objective sheet. So without further ado, let's get going. Uh, so one of the first things you usually, you know, you can do pretty easily is identify gender. So is it a male or a female rat? Uh, and so you go down here towards the end, you can check uh, the amount of openings you have, and then you can see there's a rectum, a vaginal orifice. So let's go ahead and get those going. So vaginal orifice, so the opening will be right there. All right, right in that region. Okay. And then next up, we have the rectum. Uh, part of the digestive tract, obviously. Kind of get a little peek of it. And that's the rectum. So right there at the base of the tail. All right. So, fun times. Uh, starting off with that. So now let's go back up towards the head. All right, and so there's a little head. This thing's got some claws on it. Look at those things. I have been... I've... I've I've run across those claws a little bit performing this dissection. Uh, it has not been the easiest, uh, just avoiding those things. Uh, but so this tube you see right down the middle there, uh, this little ridgy tube, that is one of our first structures we'll look at, uh, and that is the trachea. The trachea. Ba -ba. And so if you take AMP2, you'll, you'll learn a little more about the trachea, but it's a key structure involved in the respiratory system. So. Those rings that it has, if, you're, if you actually feel it, you can feel it. It's, it's hard. And so a lot of tubes, when they're empty, they'll flatten out. But the trachea's job is to carry air. It's always going to be flat. And so if it wasn't for these rings that hold it open and keep, and keep it that structure, that shape, then the trachea would collapse. You couldn't breathe. Uh, so it's a key part of the structure. If you have a tracheotomy, that's where you actually go through and puncture a hole through the trachea and we'll try and pump air through it that way. So if you've got some sort of clog, that's some other point along the way. Uh, I've done one tracheotomy in my life. It was on a rabbit in my animal physiology class. Um, the rabbit made it. My tracheotomy was successful. So it later, well, we're not going to go into the rest of that class, but for the, for the most part, I did a successful tracheotomy. So I'm one for one, and I don't want to ever do another one again. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> mess with that. Attempt fate, I guess. Uh, but that is the trachea, trachea, sorry. All right, zooming in, trachea. Okay, it's a good structure. It's a cool name, trachea. All right, next up, uh, let's hit up the thymus. So the thymus is involved in the endocrine system, and, man, I should not have, I should have swapped hands here, whatever. Uh, so the thymus is this little rascal right there. So that's our thymus. And so if we zoom in a little bit, uh, it lays on top of the heart. It's just kind of a, a meaty little flesh thing. Uh, it's a site where certain cells in the immune system will go to further along the development uh, and get exposed to maybe pathogens or just, there's, it, it, it's an immune system role, but that's the thymus. And that's also an AMP2 subject. Uh, but now let's get down to the real stuff you remember. Uh, let's, get, let's look at the heart here. Uh, so the heart. All right, heart. Uh, check it out. There it is. Uh, so that's the heart. Bam. Heart. So cool. And hold on a second. All right, we're back. So uh, to the magic of editing, that second went by very quickly, but I decided to swap hands so that way this will be a little easier to show you the structures. So, uh... Yeah, let's get back at it. Okay, so last up, we saw the heart. It was right, uh, let's see, there. Oh, whoops. Gotta get more in where the camera is there more. Uh, but so, there it is. And now the lungs. So, let's see, the lungs. So I gotta remember where my camera's at. That's the tricky part. The lungs, these little flaps that surround the heart. There are a couple lobes on either side. So this, this cavity does not want to stay open, man. I've been working hard. Uh, but so there it is. You can kind of get a feel for it. So there's the this rat was injected uh, with some latex to give it color for the blood vessels. So that's why the blue and red is in there. Uh, but so yeah, that's it right there. Okay. 
lungs, check. And now let's look at one of the important structures uh, that helps divide, uh, essentially serves as a divider between the abdominal cavity and the thoracic cavity up near the top, and that is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is super important when it comes to respiration, the active air going in and out of your lungs. That does not happen without the diaphragm doing what it does, which is contracting and relaxing to change the volume of the space. But that's again an AMP2 topic. Uh, but here's the diaphragm, this flap there. So this always gets cut when you do a dissection because you have to rip it open and it doesn't like that. But it's a muscular little flap. So diaphragm right there. You see, diaphragm. Let me some diaphragm. Okay, now let's hit up our first of the digestive organs. Now, when you first look at this bad boy, you're gonna look at it and go, oh boy, there's all kinds of stuff in that. Look at that. Uh, you got all this business here, which I pulled out, by the way. Uh, this was all cramped and packed in there. It's pretty impressive. It's a nice pack job of all the organs. Better packer than I am, that's no show. Uh, but then you see this rascal right here. Like, look at that. And the first thing people always jump to is, oh, it's the stomach. Oh, not the stomach. Turns out this large organ, large and in charge, is the liver. So this is the liver. Multiple lobes of the liver. Massive organ. Uh, the liver is one of the more important organs. Well, all the organs are important, but the liver really is important. It does a whole lot of stuff for the body. A lot of detoxifying, uh, filtering out food, like the, the nutrients that you intake from your food. So all kinds of functions happen inside the liver. Very unique microanatomy too. We'll get to it at some point. Uh, but that's the liver. And so on, and, and, you, and you and I, uh, we have a gallbladder. Note, the rat does not, no gallbladder. So if you check underneath the liver, you will see no gallbladder, what? Uh, so rat's extremely successful organism, no gallbladder. So good, good for them. Uh, okay, now let's go to the stomach. So let's find the stomach. So this one is gonna be a little tricky. This bag right here, that's your stomach. And so if I was feeling adventurous, uh, I would cut that open. Am I feeling adventurous? Not at the moment. Uh, not with my phone being the main thing that's, you know, covering really close to the stomach. I don't know if I want to get into all that, but stomach is found right there. But yeah, you can puncture this sucker. The stomach, pretty famous. It can expand straight down depending on its contents, uh, but that is the stomach. I mean, with rats, I mean, they can eat almost anything, so who knows what's even in this thing. Uh, I would assume mush you can't identify. And so next up is the pancreas. Now here's the deal. The pancreas is a, is a real, it's a real thing. Uh, it's, it's a tricky little bee. And so sometimes it's easier to spot and it's like boom, there it is, perfection. You know, amazing looking pancreas, couldn't get any better. Other times it can be indecipherable, for me anyway, uh, to just fatty connective tissue mesh. So I think my suspicion is the pancreas is part of this torn up tissue here. It does not really preserve well, but inside of this will be the pancreas. However, I'm not too thrilled with how that looks. So I've got some other pictures I'll throw in there to represent a pancreas. Uh, that'd be for my pig, but it's a really good looking pancreas. Oh man, fantastic pancreas. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll throw that in there on your little weekly stuff. So don't worry, you'll get a good picture of a pancreas uh, before, well, I, I don't know, before the day's done, I guess. Uh, okay, so now let's look up to the intestines. So small intestines, large intestines is kind of tricky. So small intestines is generally kind of smaller in size, but they're an overall like uh, shape, but there's more of it than large intestines, a lot more of it than large intestines. One of the easiest ways to kind of spot it is to start with the stomach and then see where it connects. So, so there's the, the stomach, there's the junction that connects the stomach to the intestines, and then, so this is the small intestines. And it'll last a good little while. Pretty much, if you see it like this, small intestines. That's kind of a good rule of thumb. All right, it's, it can be tricky though. Uh, small intestines is where you'll get a lot of nutrient absorption in the body, so when you, when you eat, Food goes to the stomach, it's broken down, and then it can be absorbed a little easier. Some nutrient absorption happens in the stomach. The rest, most of that, the rest of it will occur in the stomach and the small intestines. It'll travel down the small intestines. There's like a cool little slide 
that's just like a spiral slide that travels all through inside your small intestines and it just absorbs uh, nutrients and things that you've taken in from your body, little vitamins, but there's various things in there. And so small intestines is the main site for, for absorption for food uh, that you've taken in. Some water can get reabsorbed at that point too. Uh, but large intestines is its main job is just absorbing some water and some like leftover ions, some of the like leftover little things, uh, vitamins come into play. Uh, but for the large intestines, this one's pretty interesting actually. So it's kind of a, uh, you start here. So that's our large intestines. And so my kind of tip is I go now near the rectum. So this will be the descending colon and bam, large intestines. So this little thing right there, you can actually see a little bit was was making its way. It was almost out, uh, but it is in fact not. And so you can kind of follow this around a little bit and see some of it. Uh, I think it's a little easier to see the difference in a pig personally, um, but we're doing a rat here. So it might be, I'll include a picture of a pig too so you can get, get that feeling. Uh, I've got pictures of pig dissections just readily available. Don't ask questions. Uh, but they're they're there. Okay, so next up, uh, let's look at the spleen. The spleen is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a cool little organ. Uh, it's involved a few different functions. Um, involved with the uh, circulatory system, it helps break down red blood cells, and it's involved in the immune system as well. Uh, but the spleen is this little thing here. It's like a little tongue inside the the abdominal cavity. So there's your spleen. And if you check it out, it's like this big, long little tongue. And sometimes they can just like loop over like that. But it, it doesn't have to dig out a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's a cool little organ. So that's your spleen. Again, the spleen. All right. Uh, what else we got? Next, mesentery. So mesentery is pretty sweet. Uh, it's actually, so when you look at these intestines, right, it's, it's all connected. Like it's so tough. And you can see these little red lines going through, all this mesh, all this stuff. That's mesentery. So it's involved in holding blood vessels that will travel to the intestines because, I mean, that's how nutrients and water get inside your body, through blood. And so mesentery contains a lot of those and some other tissues, so it's technically an organ. And so this is the mesentery, pretty good example. It's very vibrant, like, oh man, look at that sucker, look at it, it's popping. Mesentery. Uh, so it just kind of is found between the ropes of intestine. So, mesentery, okay? And next, let's go with the kidneys. The kidneys, okay, we're almost done here. So, kidney time. Kidneys can be a little tricky because you have to dig kind of in the bottom. Sometimes it's going to be flooded with water. We got lucky this time, that was not the case. Uh, this stupid lung, liver won't get out of the way. Uh, but you got two kidneys on either side. They're what's called retroperitoneal. They're underneath a layer called the peritoneum. Uh, and so it's a layer that surrounds this entire region. So this is not the kidney, but this area is covered in something called the peritoneum. The kidney is behind that. Boom, kidney. Let me show you the other one. It's a little lower. I'll get this crap out of the way. Okay, kidneys. Boom, kidneys. Now, low key, a little fun trivia for you. Kidneys, probably my favorite organ. That's right, kidneys. Uh, you look at them as, oh, they just make pee. Oh. Oh, you have been so misinformed if that's all you think kidneys do. They do so much more than just make pee. Kidneys are amazing. They are so unique. They are so cool. I love how they function. They have these little structures called nephrons inside of them. They're so cute. They're like little crazy straws. It's awesome. Like, I love the kidneys so much. Uh, urinary system, phenomenal. Just a, just a great system. So many things they do. Kidneys are involved with blood pressure. They're involved with hormones. So all kinds of cool stuff with the kidneys. Uh, and the kidneys are so cool, they got a sidekick, right? They got a best friend who does something completely different. So, the Robin to their Batman. The, I don't know, what's good? Uh, the Bucky Barnes to their Captain America Steve Rogers. Uh, and that would be the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is like a little hat that the kidneys wear. And I am having a heck of a time getting in there uh, and holding this up. I, my, my other hand is ungloved. I don't want to touch these organs. I'm hoping this stays up. Adrenal gland, you can kind of see it up in this region, that's where it'd be positioned. And so it's a little hat that kind of, looks like a little hat kind of rests on top of the bean-shaped kidney right up in there. 
Uh, and the adrenal glands are involved with hormones too. It's actually for a small structure, it's pretty cool. They have like three different layers to them and they respond to a hormone from elsewhere called the adrenal cortotropic hormone. And then at the adrenal uh, gland, they can release a bunch of different stuff. So they do all kinds of things um, with that. So it's pretty cool. All right, let's go down and look at the bladder. Uh, this one, for some reason, the bladder can always give me a little trouble too, but that's a solid bladder right there. Uh, boom, bladder, bladder. Bladder holds pee. You can stretch. Uh, later on this semester, I'll tell you, if you uh, one of my fun things to share anyway in my sections is I'll talk about a fun way you can say, you know, you have to go pee. Uh, instead of saying, I have to go pee. You can be all sciencey sounding. Um, but yeah, that's, that comes later. Okay, so we got a female. All right, so for the male parts, you should look at pictures. There'll be other pictures from a pig dissection again that'll show you some of those structures. Uh, for now, we're going to look at the female anatomy. And so those include the ovaries and uterus. So the uterus is the pretty easy one. Um, okay, so we'll look at that sucker, so the uterus. And so it starts about here. So about right in there be the uterus. All right. Not to be confused with the bladder. This is the uterus. And you can see it's pretty flat, pretty compressed. These tubes coming off of it are the uterine horns. And so there's two very prominent ones. I'm sorry my camera's auto-focusing. That's, I know it's probably pretty annoying, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's the uterine horns. And at the end of those suckers, down near that region, is where you're gonna find your ovaries. Now this one's kind of jacked up over here. Uh, it is not, not great. I think I cut it. Uh, <laughs> but over here, it's a little better. And so over here, you can actually get a good looking, relatively, ovary. And it's found, let's see, ovary, it'll be found right in there. So sorry, ovary, right in there. And it's found at the end of the uterine horn. So when the eggs are released, they'll travel, they can get picked up, uh, and then brought into the uterine horn. They can travel down where they will wait to be fertilized. So pretty cool. Oh, there we go. That's a good view. Uh, there'll be some pictures of these two, of stills, if you will. Uh, I'm going to take of this dissection that can show some of these things too, so you can check that out uh, and see, compare, cross reference. But yeah, that's a nice looking ovary. That ain't bad. Not the yellow junk. That's just that's just fat. Uh, but the ovary here. Okay. So I think that wraps up our first dissection video in AMP1. We don't do a lot of dissections. This is one of the first ones for, and one of the last ones for a while. I'm trying to think the next one is the brain. Yeah, the brain. So that'll be, ooh, that's a little ways away. Um, but for now, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. Quit the candy, candy material. And yeah, good luck. See you later, rep.